what's the point of this experiment? To show you what would happen if you mixed water into your transmission fluid. We have an empty glass coffee jar over here and we are going to use this jar for an experiment over here. It is related to vehicle fluids. First, we have water. Curious about how water looks in this jar. It's a good amount of water. We're gonna dump the water back out. And now we have transmission fluid in the other jug over here. And we're going to pour the transmission fluid in here to see what it looks like. Normally you expect transmission fluid to be pinkish, maybe brown if it if it is dirty. So there's a little bit of a red tint to this. Maybe you need to shake it up a little bit to see that. But anyway, there you go. There's your transmission fluid. All right, so there's transmission fluid. It's a little spent, so it's got a little bit of brown to it. Uh, it's got pink that, unfortunately, the camera does not seem to carry. But what I'm going to do is add this, water. Maybe at some point before finishing the experiment, I should explain what I'm trying to do here. It's a test on what transmission fluid is supposed to look like, or rather what transmission fluid could look like if you added water into it, say by spraying your engine or driving through a flood, whatever the situation. So here we go. But what do you know? The transmission fluid, although a hydraulic fluid, is an oil after all, and oil is less dense than water, so oil ends up going to the top. We're gonna kick this thing up a notch. Still the same jar, still the same contents. This is a glove. I'm gonna cut it in half. I was cutting the glove because I want to use it as a, as a sealer here. Uh, well, why choose this kind of a material? Well, because gloves are, you know, supposedly impervious to fluids leaking. And I just don't know how tight of a seal this coffee jar lid is going to be. So there we go. Kicking it up a notch means using this thing like a transmission would. That means pumping it up and down and basically running it in the system. So shake. This is all real time, y'all. Ah, looks like some nasty milkshake, doesn't it? But given enough time, it should end up settling down. Let's give it another one and just see. This is real time. I'm trying to see how long it takes to settle out. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time because now I have a clock. Okay, now watch. No pun intended. Pause. You know what might help this go a little faster? Air. So let's open this up. Well, because, after all, transmissions are usually aerated, right? Transmissions have a spot at the top, a breather hose, so to say. So let's keep watching. It seems like it's going a little faster now, isn't it? At least the water settling out at the bottom. It looks like it's fully separated right now. I don't know what value leaving it for a few more minutes is going to do. But that's what we're going to do. It's now 740, let's call it 44. And I'm just going to let this sit for a while. And maybe we'll be able to, to know what happens to it. Okay? That's good enough. This is our new test test container. So we'll let this sit for a while and then go back and look at it. 
and here's our water and transmission fluid mixture. As you can see here, it doesn't seem to want to settle out any further than it's already done. You can see the boundary there has got some foam and the air, air bubbles are being trapped, air bubbles from the water being trapped by the oil. And that's what it looks like on top. Let's tilt the camera. That is it. Just looks like transmission fluid. So what's the point of this experiment? The experiment has an automotive lean to it and what I was trying to prove was that no matter, well first off water does mix up with your transmission fluid and it makes a, a liquid or other substance that's not ideal for either hydraulic function or cooling, right? Uh, you notice water is pretty good by itself for whatever water is meant to do and the transmission fluid is good for whatever transmission fluid is meant to do but when you mix it up you have this milkshake thing. I don't think that's good for anything. Helps, uh, you know, washes off the transmission fluid from surfaces, displaces it, causes rusting and this and that. So, in, in short, do your best to avoid water from getting in there. However, the other lean to it is this. Most drain, uh, drain plugs or drain locations for your transmission fluid or most other automotive fluids are going to be at the bottom, somewhere around here. So when you start draining it, especially after your transmission fluid or rather your whatever you have in your transmission pan has been sitting for a while and you drain it and the first thing that comes out is not red, it's whitish or colored like water, you do have a problem. Usually what I do is this. I have a very large jug over here and this is where my fluids go into initially. Everything is drained here and then over I let it settle for maybe, you know, a few hours, minutes, usually it just depends on what it is. But usually if you have a mixture of fluids, you should be able to see that same thing we were seeing in that little jar can you should be able to see it over here you should see a level forming between or rather a level between your transmission fluid and water or whatever other fluid you have in there okay that was the whole purpose of this experiment to show you what could happen if you mixed water into your transmission fluid and with that i'd like to say that it is pretty successful for the intentions of the experiment and all the best. I hope this was helpful in one way or another. In the end, I'd like to say that this was successful f for the intended purposes of this experiment, and I hope that this will be helpful to you in one way or another. After about a day, well, not exactly 24 hours, but this is it. This is the culmination of my experiment. You have transmission fluid on top and you have water at the bottom. I wouldn't drink that water, obviously. So I don't think it's going to get any more separated out than it has right now. And so I guess I, I made the right assumption last night that this was going to be it.